What's up, everybody? Charlie Marlowe here. Felt it was important and necessary and that I should jump on here and discuss the news that most of you already know by now that 590 The Fan is shutting down operations basically this week. So all the shows are ending. Our last day is tomorrow on Friday. And I'm told they'll be going to national sports programming on Monday while the station is then put on the market to be sold, have no idea who it will be sold to. And obviously because the uh, the station is shutting down, whoever buys it, they could do anything they want to with the station. They could, heck, they could make it sports again. They could try to bring back the lineup that's on there right now, but they could go to country music, whatever the heck they want. And I don't want to uh, make it seem like there's a good chance that the lineup and the shows come back. I, I don't think that's a good chance at all of happening, uh, but we'll see. You never know. Maybe somebody will want to bring back uh, 590 and the sports format, but I have no idea whatsoever. But uh, look, after being there for a long time and two different times for me, some of these people have been at 590, I think three times, but uh, look, 590, the fan KFNS is very important to me. There's a lot of great people that work there. And uh, look, a lot of the people that work in, in media, TV, radio, podcasts, whatnot, they have a lot of jobs and, and side jobs. And some people have TV as their main job or YouTube podcasts. But there's also, there's a good handful of people there at 590 who that's their that's their full-time job, right? That's that's their salary. That's how they put food on the table for their family. And I think, I think, Eventually, everybody will will find other gigs, and it's and it's all good there. But but look, I mean, that that's something that hits you right in the face when you when you realize that your uh, that your your workplace is shutting down. I remember getting laid off in two thousand eight. I was like twenty five years old, and that was that was a shock to me then. But uh, when it's all said and done, I, I think everybody will will end up in a good spot. But still, it's sad. And look. Look, I'm not totally shocked by the news. I feel like it was headed in this direction of being sold in the last couple years or so, just kind of the writing on the wall of, of how things were going. And I just want to say this, Dave Zobrist, the owner of the station, is a great guy, great person. And and look, man, he he took his shot. He tried. He, he took over a radio station that wasn't doing well. And then all kinds of craziness happened with COVID and the economy and you have PPP. That was before him, but still inflation. It's not the greatest environment right now, but, but also he didn't inherit a station that was doing really well. Then all of a sudden it plummeted. It was going to be an uphill battle from the get go. And also Dave Zobers, who I think owned the station for three years or so. I'm not sure exactly when he took over, but for sure the last two and a half years. Look, he put his hard-earned money into this, and he provided a lot of jobs and a lot of money and a lot of salary for a lot of people. I don't know how many employees 590 has full-time and part-time. It's got to be somewhere, I would think, within around the 20s, maybe, of people that are there either on air, behind the scenes, part-time, full-time, contributors. Maybe it's 30, 20. I have no clue, but it's some somewhere in that general vicinity. So Dave Zobris provided provided jobs for a lot of people for uh, the better part of three years, I would think. And again, he, he took his shot and it didn't work. It didn't work out. And uh, look, that's nobody's fault, but it's everybody's fault. I'm, I'm not even blaming anyone, but I, I think we should, we should credit Dave Zobris. One of the best bosses, probably the best boss I've ever had, honestly, never meddled. You could say whatever you wanted, on 590 the fan never texted you emailed called and said hey i don't like what you're saying or the advertiser didn't like didn't like that i mean the only time he he stepped in on our show is when we were being stupid we were being dumb we were fighting amongst ourselves right and you have to at that point because you're the owner of the station we were we were embarrassing him for a while though that's totally on us but uh really loved working for dave zobris would work with and and for him again in the future we actually talked about uh Maybe doing something. We'll see what happens. I got all this YouTube and podcast going on. And the Kenny Wallace YouTube channel is a, is a monster. It's my, it's my full-time job. But uh, look, Hot Take Central, 
was a was a lot of fun the last two and a half years. And I, I went to part time six months ago. But even before that, when I was on with, uh, I mean, go back the first time around when I filled in on the morning after that was like, I think 10 years ago, or maybe 12. I can't even remember a long time ago. And then uh, I came back and it started the second time around. The station was in St. Charles. Martin and I, Chris Gardner, had uh, what, Midday Grind? No. What was it called? Midday Grind. Yeah. I forget the names of all these shows. But uh, I think that show went on for a couple years. And then Cam Jansen show with Charlie Marlowe. Then the Cam Jansen show and the Charlie Marlowe show. I think Cam and I did two, two and a half years. And then Hot Take Central, what, two and a half years? So I'm not sure exactly, but I feel like I feel like I've been on 590 the second time for about seven years, maybe. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like that's that's pretty close. Maybe seven, eight years, whatever it is. Different management, different ownership. Hey, radio, it's a crazy business. It's a tough business. It is what it is. Like I said, I'm not I'm not blaming anyone. Everybody tried hard. Everybody worked hard. Everybody took their shot. And uh, look, this is the way it all uh, went down. I think the good thing is, I think everybody's going to work together again in some capacity. I'm not saying the shows are going to be exactly the same, but with podcast and YouTube, I'll always like to, to do something with these guys, whether it's once a week or whatever it is. And who knows, maybe an opportunity comes to, to do the show again in some capacity on a different station. I have no idea. I don't even know if I really want to do that personally because I'm so busy with the YouTube and podcast, but definitely doing something once a week or so, or a couple times a week. And who knows, maybe doing something with Martin Kilcoin. You got the, uh, the TMA guys. I mean, there's always opportunities to doing something. And I have, I have no plans whatsoever. I'm actually freaking overworked right now with this, with the Kenny Wallace YouTube channel. When I say overworked, I'm happy about that. I'm not complaining. But the Cardinals channel is going well. This Everybody Settle Down podcast with Eric Messersmith, News and Politics, is really starting to register. So we're going to focus more energy on that. But uh, look, um, Hot Take Central. All my guys there, Cam Jansen, Jimmy the Cat Hayes, Cole Bartimus. Go back to Nate Lucas, who started, obviously, on the show, and uh, Seth Close as well. It was a lot of fun for two and a half years. Um, at the end there, Really, the reason I left full time was a was a bunch of reasons. Um, my schedule in the morning it just helped out my family big time. If I could be there in the morning and help get my kids off to school, especially when my kids started going to different schools, and then also the the Kenny Wallace and the YouTube podcast blew up, so I needed more hours in the day. And also, if I'm being honest, which I always try to be honest with all you guys, I I did kind of see that probably 590 the fan long term wasn't going to be sustainable and so that's part of the reason that i felt like the earlier that i could start to build up and position myself with the youtube and the podcast for me personally i thought it was the better long term option i'm only 42 years old so you know if i was 62 i'd just ride it out till retirement but at 42 i feel like this pivot to youtube podcast it's the present it's the future. And the quicker I did that, the better off I was going to be in the long run. And I think that's also part of this equation, not just for me, but let's be real about this. The, the landscape of media is changing rapidly in advertising. And uh, you see so many people, big names, national names, local names, going to YouTube, going to podcasts. You have the targeted advertising right here. You guys are are watching me or listening to me on podcast and YouTube right now. And the analytics and the data you can show advertisers is, is crazy good. And it's also, I mean, all the numbers are there. You don't have to kind of wonder how many people are watching, listening. You can show an advertiser the data of, hey, this is how many impressions I get it. You want to pay 10 bucks per impression? Boom. This is how many impressions we're giving you every week, every month, every uh, year. So that's kind of a tangent, but yeah, sad day, not an unexpected or shocking piece of news. You know, I didn't I didn't think it would necessarily happen now, but I, I figured in the next year or so, 
that Dave Zobris would probably want to sell the station. And, and, and that's the case. Look, and he put a lot of money into it, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources, and, and he deserves to do something else and not have the stress and not lose money month after month after month. So I want to thank everybody, everybody there. I mean, Jim Hewer and I'll leave people out, but I mean, you know, obviously Bernie Miklas and Frank, you have Kevin Slayton and Nate, uh, Charlie Tuna, you know, love kind of just, just everybody. I always felt kind of like a 590, the fan guy, you know what I'm saying? Like I always wanted to stay at 590, the fan, especially, especially in the last five, six years, whenever we moved to Kirkwood, right? I just felt like I kind of fit in at 590 and nothing against other stations, but I don't even watch that much sports these days. I like a show that's more just like shooting the shit, hanging out, little sports, guy talk, trying to be funny. 590 the fan is so freaking close to my house that it's just absolutely perfect for me. Again, I'm being selfish here, but I think I said everything I wanted to say there. Thank you. Oh, the one thing obviously is like, thank you all the, the fans, listeners, sponsors, you guys make it possible. All the great comments we get on social media and all the text line. And uh, look, I'll still be doing stuff. If you want to find me, it's easy. Charlie Marlowe, that will be the Cardinal stuff. That will be the sports stuff on YouTube. Uh, everybody settle down. That's the news and politics stuff. That's on YouTube and podcast. Kenny Wallace, that's anything NASCAR racing related. I also do a lot of on-camera stuff there. Kenny Wallace Media, that's any podcast. And a lot of my sports podcasts for now, even if it's Cardinals, football, anything sports, I put on the Kenny Wallace Media podcast platform. That may change soon. I may get a different podcast platform if, if some things work out. We will see. Don't know exactly. But uh, thank you to all the, the listeners, viewers, fans of Hot Take Central. It was a lot of fun. Um, thank you to my sponsors. Triad Bank, of course. Triad Bank, best thing I ever did for my rental property business, taking all my commercial loans from a big bank that didn't care about me to a local bank. I'm meeting with the folks at Triad coming up on Tuesday. Corner Butcher, Mike Diffley and family, great family. Corner Butcher in Fenton, Chop House, the restaurant across the street in Fenton. You have Corner Butcher West in Ellisville. You have my guy, Tim Jankerson, St. Louis Lawn Care, St. Louis Equipment, stllawncare.com, stlmowerrepair.com. Anything, treatment of your grass, weed control, cutting your grass, mulch. If you want to buy or repair a mower, small engines, I bought a trimmer. I bought a blower there. They do it all. And I'm hoping we got to talk with all these sponsors that people are going to continue to uh, be with me on podcasts and YouTube. And we'll probably put their graphic up there eventually or put a scroll on there to make sure they're getting all their, their mentions and impressions and all that. And we'll put that content on X. We'll put that content on podcasts. We'll put that content on YouTube. But uh, already a little bit longer than I wanted to, but hey, 590 The Fan, KFNS, they deserve, they deserve a lot of time. It's been an important place for me for, for several years and to the St. Louis community also. I know back in the day before I even got here, 590 The Fan was a, was a monster. I mean, it was an iconic brand in sports talk radio in, in St. Louis. And uh, it is sad, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe a country Western guy buys it and he turns into country music. But then five years from now, somebody wants to bring it back in the sports format. I have no freaking clue whatsoever what's going to happen. But uh, thank you to everybody. Dave Zobrist, you were great to me. Great dude, owner of 590. Everybody at Hot Take Central. I think I mentioned everybody and uh, all you guys for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. Jump on board. We're going to do a ton of content on YouTube, ton of content on podcasts. So if you like Hot Take Central, hopefully we'll try to bring some of that vibe back on all these uh, digital platforms. All right. See you guys. Thank you.